if I'm an eight-year-old kid, I don't know what the heck biohacking slash health optimization is. What would you say that is to somebody who doesn't know what the term is? Mm. Biohacking is like the iPhone 10. Yeah. The health system is like a Nokia 8800. Right, okay. They both are in the same realm of a similar technology, but one is at the forefront and a little bit riskier Yeah. Um, in some cases, but the results can be amazing. You can run your life off of one. And the iPhone 10 is a lot more addictive. Um, the other one does its job for the most part. But I think, I think biohacking is the early adopters. It's the funky stuff. It's a funky name. It's very addictive and it's about preventative health as well as clearing up health issues. Whereas standard health or medical system is more about putting fires out that have happened. Yeah. And if you ask the doctor, you know, what can I do when there's nothing wrong? He will say, well, you've got nothing wrong. <laughs>
and you're going to bed too late and waking up early and playing with the device before you go to bed so you haven't got any melatonin which is actually an antioxidant um, and is amazing for health not just for sleep yeah then you're not going to be reversing that damage therefore aging quicker and also having more chronic health issues so if there's one thing you ever do it's optimize your sleep How would you suggest that how would you say that you've actually done that what, what's the sort of like the key for you and your growth in social media and what you've been doing what you've been what your message has been it's a really bloody good question um <laughs> I think, and long-winded as well <laughs> no I, it's, it, it's good uh, i think the first thing is i was taught uh, about seven or eight years ago by my mentor yeah follow the fun stop worrying about everything and follow the fun and I think, and this is a big life lesson for me, especially if I think it's good for your audience if I, yeah. I wouldn't normally on a, on a health, solely health related podcast, but I think for your audience this is probably good. Like, I, I often, because I've been in psychology for pretty much 20 years of my life, and I applied that to marketing and not in a, a manipulative sense, more understanding the value within things yeah. and communicating them. Yeah. Therefore, if it is a good product or a good thing, people will understand that and buy it. And, and if the value isn't there for them, they won't. It's not, you know, the dark arts manipulation stuff, which sure. I'm very strongly against. Um, now, um, because of my background in psychology, and I've, I entered that through wanting to understand myself better and communicate better and it's been a big journey it's been a very fun one but one of the things that I'd ask everyone from everyone I meet is if there was one word that hang, hang, hung above your head yeah that always drove you what would it be now I remember asking my cousin once and now my word was always success yeah always success before I, I guess got into the health journey it was always success. So for instance, if I'm in my car, I want to look successful. If I'm in a suit and I would live, sleep, breathe in a three-piece suit with a pocket square and everything the whole yeah, time. Yeah, now yeah. I'm in, obviously I'm in a hoodie yeah. with a Steve Jobs t-shirt and torn jeans. But the point yeah. is I would not feel valuable if, or valued or of any worth if I wasn't wearing things like that. Yeah. So it's the inner, inner worth and it's like success. So, and I remember seeing a guy walking down um, near Bond Street somewhere in a beautiful three-piece suit with a, um, a neck scarf Gucci one with a pocket square coming out and a 3,000 pound Lynx bag or whatever. And I remember thinking that screams his insecurities right there, like he's not comfortable in his own skin or, you know, in anything. Now, what does that mean about me? So if I take that back to what does you know, successful, so if I'm trying to be successful in everything, that's actually looking successful, that's an insecurity. And I need people to understand that there is more to me, i.e. success. Yeah. Um, so if I was in a nightclub, for instance, not that I enjoy those, but I'd want to look successful because that's what I think people value, i.e. would that get me a woman? Sure, yeah. When I asked my cousin, 10 years my junior, a cockier version of mine, yeah. of me, <laughs> yeah. um, he said, fun. And I said, okay, so he said, yeah, when I'm like, for instance, in the nightclub, he, he wants to have fun. He doesn't care what people think of him. He's having fun. And as a result, that attracts people because they know his value. And I'm like, hang on a minute. So my behavior is to act successful, which doesn't necessarily work. And it just screams my insecurities. His is to have fun and that works for him. And people know that he's a cool guy. So I'm doing it the wrong way around. Yeah. And then my mentor in psychology just happened to say, follow the fun when we, I was talking to him once. And That's then interesting. that changed it. That changed my, I feel my inner worth. Um, I stopped caring what people thought so much. I decided to follow the fun. And that's why everything that I do on my Instagram, and this is, the re this is relevant yeah. to your question. Sorry if it's a long winded no, no, one. No, no, it's great. It's is, um, I follow the fun. So if there's something I think that's gonna help with my health or performance or make me feel happier or have better emotions or put value out into the world to help people, I will do it. Yeah. And I will test the ass off of it so I know it works or not. Yeah. And then I communicate it as realistically as I can. <laughs>